السلام علیکم ویلکم بیک ٹو ڈیویژن سیشن نمبر تھری ارلیئر وی ہیو سی لبرلائزیشن لبرلائزیشن آف فارین ٹریڈ اینڈ فارین انویسٹمنٹ پالیسی دس از ون آف دا فیکٹرس وچ اینبلڈ گلوبلائزیشن لیٹ سی اباؤٹ ون آرگنائزیشن ریلیٹڈ ٹو لبرلائزیشن فری ٹریڈ ڈبلو ٹی ورلڈ ٹریڈ آرگنائزیشن سو ورلڈ ٹریڈ آرگنائزیشن از ون سچ آرگنائزیشن ہوز ایم ٹو لبرلائز انٹرنیشنل ٹریڈ ایم آف ڈبلو ٹی او از ٹو لبرلائز انٹرنیشنل ٹریڈ اٹ بلیوز ان فری ٹریڈ free international trade free in the sense not like uh, trade of course so it's not about that free means uh, free of cost or something no here free means liberal without restrictions without barriers <clears throat> so it started at the initiative of the developed countries because developed countries those who had already industries in their countries and they were needed to sell their goods and they were seeking international markets for selling their goods as well as uh, for getting raw materials for to feeding their industries <coughs> so wto <coughs> establishes rules regarding international trade aim of wto is to liberalize international trade so of course which are those uh, countries which are member of it so in 2017 164 countries are member of wto world trade organization and uh, wto established in 1995 so <clears throat> here it uh, regulates foreign trade it tries to make foreign trade free and fair and uh, it monitors as well those countries which are member of it they follow those rules or not so through wto is supposed to allow free trade for all but uh, like we have seen earlier in practice what do we observe generally developed countries they get advantage from wto and uh, they pressurize wto to uh, make certain rules as well as uh, they pressurize wto for uh, monitoring developing countries because developing countries sometimes they need to put restrictions on certain barriers on foreign trade in certain sectors foreign trade uh, barriers are required but uh, here wto rules have forced the developing countries to make their trade free wto pushes developing country to remove restrictions to remove barriers <coughs> so an example of uh, this uh, we have seen about the agriculture sector let me remind you in brief agriculture sector in developing country like india as well as agriculture in usa in usa we know that farmers are richer they are actually like entrepreneur like businessman uh, they are wealthier and uh, they own uh, land lots of land <clears throat> so for their growing crops which is feasible growing crops and uh, selling them at lower price feasible for them because they also get subsidies from the government <clears throat> even they are richer so their agriculture production cost remain lesser and uh, they are able to sell their agriculture products crops in the international market at lower prices so in that case uh, it's harmful to countries like india where we sell our agriculture products or crops in the international market but uh, as our production cost is higher we cannot sell at lower price so difficult to compete with the countries like america in agriculture sector in international market because uh, government uh, of usa feeding them through subsidies 
through intensives. So ultimately, they earn huge profit. And uh, countries like India, we cannot sell our agriculture crops at lower price because we know that here production cost is comparatively higher. So here uh, we can see that uh, developing country, uh, they don't have advantage, but actually disadvantage in free trade. And at the same time, advantage for developed countries. So, so for subsidy and uh, other things that uh, are beyond the rules of WTO, but still uh, they find loopholes and get advantage of it. So this is about WTO and uh, there are uh, few negative impacts that we observe of WTO. But it doesn't mean that uh, WTO is useless. WTO is actually required for uh, maintaining a good trade relationship uh, across the globe and uh, it plays a major role in globalization. As we know that uh, globalization rapid process a process, rapid process of uh, interconnection or uh, integration of different economies, interrelation of different economies. So this is uh, what we call globalization. And uh, we have seen earlier in detail that uh, impacts of globalization. Of course, uh, two dimensions, some positive, some negative. If we compare, yeah, there are few Limit, uh, limit, uh, limits are there, uh, some disadvantages are there, but at the same time, uh, there are so many advantages for us. If we look at uh, the consumer perception, our view, uh, similar like uh, for employment for the people, uh, as well as for the entrepreneur too. So here yeah, there are uh, lots of advantages we have. It's not like that uh, globalization, yes it has, uh, uh, few disadvantages means uh, we should uh, stay away from it. That's not possible because uh, it's not uh, just a theory or something. That is a practical thing. That is the reality of today's world. Globalization is the reality. And uh, in the last uh, 20 years, globalization of uh, the Indian economy has come a long way. And uh, this globalization uh, affected uh, people's lives that the life we live, the life I live, the life you live and uh, we are actually thankful sometimes uh, we are not but actually we should be thankful that our life standard is uh, higher and that all thanks to globalization I am able to record this video uh, that uh, for this thing as well as uh, for uploading this video for uh, such platform that is uh, because of globalization Without globalization, such things are uh, not possible, even possible, uh, too difficult for us. So those are advantages of globalization. So impact of globalization, we can count in two ways. Impact of globalization, we count in the positive as well as in the negative way. So uh, in detail already we have discussed about it. Uh, let's recall what we had learned about the uh, impact of globalization. So it can be a question that uh, describe uh, impact of globalization on the Indian economy. Uh, mention the impact, major impact of globalization on consumer or it can be uh, instead of consumer, producer or employee. So here impact. So both positive impact and negative impact. In answer, if a uh, question like uh, mention impact of globalization on the Indian economy. So here we have to write, we should write both impacts, positive and negative. So first write positive impact or we can write uh, advantages or disadvantages, advantages of or limits. We can also count the limits. <coughs> uh, so negative we count them as limits because such limits uh, can be removed, we can come over them. Alright, so let's see. Globalization and Greater competition among producers, both local and foreign producers, has been advantage to consumers. So who get advantage of uh, competition in the market? As we know that uh, there is uh, actually that uh, stiff competition in the market in electronic goods, uh, consumer products, food and everything, most of the things. We know that we observe stiff competition. Uh, for an example, uh, nowadays the sales season uh, due to festival in e-commerce website. We know that stiff competition. 
each of them uh, tries to sell their goods with the maximum possible discounts. They try to attract the consumer through various ways, through various offers. And who get the advantage? We. All right. Uh, similar. Uh, one more example, like uh, about uh, smartphone. Uh, we know that lots of models and lots of brands are available in India and that's thanks to globalization and uh, we as a consumer we get advantage of it because each of them in competition they try to sell their goods they try to provide the best technology the best quality and all those things at a lower price and ultimately who get advantage so those advantages enjoyed by consumers so that is the benefit of consumer side more there is a greater choice before the consumers who now enjoy improved quality and lower prices so one more advantage we get better quality compared to before and for that we don't need to pay too much we get at lower price so today people enjoy much higher life standard of living than before because uh, the people just couldn't buy television now we are able to the same person is able to buy that uh, led panels right that is what we call that our life standard is getting higher among producers and workers impact of globalization has not been uniform yeah there are certain uh, limitations are there but still mnc increase their investment in india over past 20 years which means investing in india has been beneficial to them more and more mnc's started in india why do they do so because of course beneficial to them investment in india beneficial to them mnc's have been interested in industries such as electronics mobile phones <coughs> home appliances automobiles soft drink and fast food or some services like uh, banking and insurance <coughs> these products have a large number of well off buyers including like uh, people like us in these industries and services new jobs have been created so they invested in india they have plants and offices in india they need workers skill and unskilled and the investment of uh, mnc's that what we call foreign investment foreign investment leads to job opportunities we know that uh, many uh, it people as well as uh, bankers and all they are able to get work in multinational corporation they have opportunities to get work uh, also for local companies uh, beneficial too because uh, when mnc set up they need raw material many times raw materials are supplied by uh, local companies or supplied by local supplier so they get business from multinational corporation and uh, many of industries uh, get uh, orders from multinational corporations as we have seen earlier so those are the advantages now secondly several of top indian companies have been able to benefit from the increased competition before uh, if we observe that uh, before globalization few decades back those uh, indian companies were uh, not efficiently run means they didn't care because uh, they knew that uh, they already had consumer and they were not interested uh, for new innovations their quality is kind of monopoly there but now competition is there so now local producers they become more efficient they also bring that uh, new innovation in the market more through joint venture they get uh, huge capital from multinational corporations as well as technology and the brand name some have gained from successful collaboration uh, with foreign companies example we can say maruti suzuki motors <coughs> Moreover, globalization has enabled some large Indian companies to emerge as multinational themselves. Due to globalization, Indian local companies they became multinational corporations themselves. We have seen example Tata Motors, 
बजाज ऑटो लिमिटेड राइट दो सार फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स इन ऑटोमोबाइल सेक्टर देर आर मैनी अदर नाउ दोज कंपनीज एक्चुअली बिकेम पॉपुलर वर्ल्ड वाइड नॉट ओनली दे आर सेलिंग देयर गुड्स देयर व्हीकल्स टू डिफरेंट कंट्रीज अक्रॉस द कॉन्टिनेंट्स बट दे बिकेम पॉपुलर टू दे हैव द रेपुटेशन इन इंटरनेशनल मार्केट सिमिलर लाइक इन्फोसिस in software it sector run back say in medicines uh, apart from it there are many other like the himalayas that uh, natural products ayurvedic products himalayas popular in many countries i have seen they have stores and uh, better stores compared to india and uh, popular there more asian pains and pains sundaram fastness not boards there are many lots of example if we uh, try to make a list you will find the uh, hundreds of companies which are uh, not only is like uh, multinational corporation but they are popular important thing is there so those uh, some indian companies uh, which are spreading their operations worldwide and many of the multinational corporations they have acquired foreign companies we have seen right uh, routes to foreign investment so indian company local company they have acquired international brands for an example tata motors it has acquired two uh, well known uh, iconic british companies land rover and jaguar those are iconic british companies if you talk about uh, bajaj auto limited it has husqvarna ktm right so this is how they work they uh, multinational corporations and they became powerful so those are local indian companies globalization has also created new opportunities for companies providing services particularly those involved in it the indian company producing magazine for london based company and call centers are some of the examples which we have seen earlier besides a host of uh, services such as data entry what we call that outsourcing this kind of work we refer as outsourcing because uh, foreign works done in the indian uh, offices like uh, data entry accounting uh, graphic designing website designing administrative tasks engineering now uh, being done cheaply in countries such as india and they export their services their services in the developed countries uh, through outsourcing uh, so some disadvantages we have seen to <clears throat> in uh, examples before case studies before so refer the previous videos now disadvantages are there especially like uh, small scale industries which are not able to compete with the multinational corporation uh, means they are not powerful enough they don't have much investment so those companies are not able to compete with the goods of multinational corporation so example we have seen of a person named ravi who had that uh, who had uh, capacitor business and many of the capacitor business shut down due to foreign competition uh, more we have seen one example of uh, uncertain employment means whenever uh, those multinational corporation require temporarily they hire people temporary basis and uh, we have seen example of uh, garment worker as well so those are some of the negative impacts but uh, we can remove those we can come over those issues if we see the negative side that we judge the globalization as bad harmful that's not appropriate i think because uh, as i used to say everything has uh, two dimensions good bad day night right happiness sadness similar globalization has some negative impact but all we can do that uh, we can try to come over this negative impact and uh, we can uh, get we, we can try to get the maximum benefit from the globalization and who can play a role here government as well as people and organizations so the struggle for fair globalization so some evidences 
like we have discussed before in the case study that uh, not everyone get that uh, clarifies here that not everyone gets benefit from the globalization people with education skill and wealth have made the best use of new opportunities on the other hand there are many people who have not shared the benefit actually are in loss since globalization is now reality the question is how to make globalization fair the government can play a major role in making this possible its policies must protect the interest not only for rich and powerful people but all the people in the world not only well off section but that poorer section and middle class as well so here government can ensure that labor laws are properly implemented and workers get their rights because here uh, in the globalization one of the negative impact we have observed which is uh, exploitation of worker due to there are uh, loopholes in the labor laws government became liberal in labor laws so here government has to ensure that those laws labor laws especially are properly implemented it can support small producers to improve their performance till the time they become strong enough to compete through subsidy to provide them technology and in other way because uh, here small scale industries uh, they basically suffer so government uh, can help them in various way not for the lifetime but at least the time till they become that uh, powerful enough good enough stable enough if necessary the government can use trade and investment barriers in certain sectors sectors government can use it here yeah, wto is there but uh, government can negotiate with the wto and if required uh, those developing countries they can make alliances together and they can uh, put their problems in wto and this way they can negotiate with the wto and other developed countries so there is a way and uh, through negotiation through the permission of wto uh, we can put certain barriers like there are barriers in automobile industry like uh, i described you before uh, we cannot import uh, cars or vehicles from foreign countries yes definitely we can definitely we can but i uh, usually we can't because not feasible to common people importing car we have to pay up to 200% of tax on 200% tax up to 200% tax so if you purchase a car of 5 crore rupees you have to pay the 10 crore as tax on it so that 5 crore car here you will get in how much price around more than 15 crore so it is not feasible uh, so this is one example of trade barrier in the past few years massive campaigns and representation by people's organization have influenced important decision relating to trade and investment at wto people protest because in the world there is democracy and uh, if we won't give importance to democracy if we won't utilize advantages of democracy we will suffer and uh, the day is uh, not uh, far where when the country like india and when the world will come under the influence of few powerful people that's why few international organization they always protest on various way and globalization is one of the matters for them <clears throat> so this has demonstrated that people also can play important role in struggle for fair globalization so fair globalization would create opportunities for all and also ensure that benefit of globalization are shared better and uh, with this uh, i'm going to finish my revision here today if you have any query any doubt if you want to know something more some more information whatever your queries your questions uh, you can send on the, the help and number as well as you can write in the comment section given below Uh, soon i will provide you notes as well as uh, question answers thank you so much for watching me stay tuned